Meet Ali Bennett, a friend of mine, a young Muslim born and raised in Sydney, Australia, who has lived quite a successful life. However, it was only recently that his life took a dramatic turn. This is Ali's story. Where are you at now with your life? What's happened to you? At this point in my life, well, uh, yani, I've been gifted, yani, alhamdulillah, by Allah, with um, yani, cancer throughout my body. And um, yani, I've changed my whole life to sort of helping people. Why do you call it a gift, Ali? And alhamdulillah, it's, it's a gift because, because um, And it's a gift because um, yani Allah's given me a chance to, to change. What has having cancer, what has it opened your eyes to? Yeah, it's every, everything in, in life, yani. even, even the yani, smallest gift, like uh, yani breathing fresh air. Do you feel like you used to take that for granted before? How long have you had cancer? For? Four months now. Ali was diagnosed with stage four cancer and given only seven months to live. Upon finding the news, he immediately sold his successful business and was forced to reconsider the lavish lifestyle he was accustomed to. Everything was to change. Ali, what was your reaction when you came to know you had cancer? I got rid of my, my cars, I got rid of my watches, even my clothes. I took them with me overseas and I, and I gave them to a lot of people up there. Alhamdulillah. So I wanted to try to leave this world without anything. So you were on a mission to get rid of your dunya? It wasn't until Ali invited us into his room that we truly understood the luxurious lifestyle that he was living and the extent of the sacrifice that he was making. What's all this, Ali? Talk to me, explain this. It's a bracelet, Yani. Costs about 60,000. 60, $60,000? Yeah. What do you have in these boxes, Ali? They're all my shoes, alhamdulillah. Louis Vuitton? All Louis Vuitton. How much is something like this worth, Ali? They're probably about 1300 How much you pay for that, Ali? About 700 Thongs? For a pair of thongs, yeah. So what's happening with the sunglasses here, Ali? I just like collecting different sunglasses. Yeah? I've got rid of a lot of them. I gave them to a couple of the brothers at, in Africa, alhamdulillah. So you're telling me there's a kid in Africa that's walking around with Louis Vuittons and... <laughs> <laughs> Can I try one of these hats on? I've only mentioned them in my talks like a hundred times. You can try the red one on. It's limited edition one. Barakallah. What do you reckon else? Shaq, Shaq Gucci. <laughs> Ali's interest in the dunya has left him abruptly and no longer holds a place in his heart. So Ali, what do you feel now like when you look at this? And you're driving something like this doesn't really cross my mind anymore. It's not, and it's not something I would want to do no more. After someone tells you, or you find out that you're sick, or you haven't got much time in this life, well, like, this is the last thing yani, you would want to chase. And this, this is how we should be living our life every day. A car like this, people would love to be in it. People would love to own it. People would love to drive it. Well, like, they're going for the wrong goals. And you realise that when you get sick, when someone tells you you haven't got long to live, you realise all this stuff it does not benefit us in any way. So what's the value of this in your heart now? This? This is worth yani, one pair of thongs for, 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 a, for a little African child with no thongs. Wallahi, it's worth more than me to see him smile with a pair of thongs than own one of these. Wallahi al-Azim. Ali has since dedicated the remainder of his life and wealth to helping those who are far less fortunate than him. After an emotional journey to Africa, Ali has established a charity titled Muslims Around the World Project. The organization wasted no time in the construction of a masjid 
and a school in Africa to serve as an ongoing charity for him when he finally has to depart this world. Well, it all started from when I was, I went to the cemetery when a brother that has the same, that has cancer passed away. And I was at the cemetery and I was just thinking to myself, you know, after you go, there's nothing. There's no one there for you. No, no mother, no father, no brother, no sister, except for your deeds. Even your money is not going to be there for you. So the only thing that's going to be there for you is a salaka. And that's the only thing that's going to help you gradually for your, for your time in the grave till you get to the ultimate destination. As the reality of death further sinks in, Ali spends most of his personal time in preparing himself for his final meeting with his Creator, Allah. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, more or less, he says, He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And he who hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. Are you loving to meet Allah? Because of this cancer, I've been advised by one of the brothers to take a special any drug to help me with pain and stuff. And subhanAllah, it's very strong. I took a bit too much and I came into a, a whole different world within not knowing where I was. And it was very hard for me. And subhanAllah, I actually seen things I've never seen before. And my family were there all standing around me and I was pointing up and I was saying, and he, Ya Allah, take me. And it, it was that beautiful what I was seeing. I just wanted to go. And the next day, subhanAllah, I woke up and I was upset that Allah didn't take me. Well, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify you and to give you shifa to keep you around us for a long time. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Lift up your hand, just record everyone. Mm. Don't record the hundred guys here. Get the crowd, get the crowd. That bloke next to you didn't come and see his uncle yesterday. That bloke next to you didn't send Sam Essie. Tell him he's not my family. Tell him he's not nothing to do with my family. Yeah, I'm waiting for a section eight. Eight, 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 the new one. Yeah. Yeah. On your left, on your left, when you're driving in. So we can so we can start with ours, bruv. Please make a make an answer, please. Okay. Yeah,
ما يدفعوا تشوف بيبو؟ ها؟ ما فهمنا Let the car through, boys. Hey, when the car, when my dad comes, just get in here. That's it. As long as it's easy to get now, just as long as the, when the car comes. Brothers, as you wait, uh, fill in these moments and these uh, minutes uh, with istighfar, with tasbih, with dhikr. Now we're still in the blessed month of Ramadan. One uh, tasbih in Ramadan uh, has much more reward than it being outside of Ramadan. And make dua for him. Don't just stay silent. Make dhikr from your heart uh, with your tongue as well. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Until the, uh, until the funeral arrives. Get my dad in. Just take. Huh? Get him in. Hey, uh, boys, please make room for my dad. Tiffs. To block I'm here. Block her. Look, uh, clear, clear the green, the whole green, clear it. Where's my dad standing? Yeah, yeah. Come here, yeah. Come here. 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 Come here.
take the silver plate, put it where he's hidden. Where he's hidden. Are you looking at it? Come here. So, Come here. Yeah, all right. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant And final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My brothers in Islam, let me begin first by mentioning to you something about Ali Which I in my life hesitated to say to him Because I thought it would have been a fitna for him So I avoided to say it and I'm going to say it now in front and before and on top of his grave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. That the friends of Allah, awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim, there is absolutely no fear upon them, wa la hum yahzanun, and there is nothing for them to worry and be sad about. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Al ladina amanu wa kanu yattaqoon, those who had firm iman and belief, and they feed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reward for them, Allah Azza wa says, لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ For them is the good news and the glad tidings in this worldly life. Abu Darda رضي الله عنه, he came to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم once and he asked him, Ya Rasool Allah, مَا الْبُشْرَى فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا What's this beautiful good news that the believer gets in this worldly life? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Sayyidina Abu Abad Darda, since this ayah has been revealed until this day, no one ever asked me this question. Oh. Let me answer it to you. He said to him, the good news that the friends of Allah receive in this life is a righteous, true dream that the dying person sees or it's seen on his behalf. Based on that, Ali, Allah, Yerhamu, a few months ago, one of the brothers who's here with us, he saw a dream in where there was a long tree and Ali was climbing this tree. As he was climbing it, he got really high up. He fell and he fell to his death. And who was in that dream? I myself was there and my brother Safwan, my friend Safwan, we were standing there. I said to Omar, let me translate it and let me interpret it for you. That tall tree is La ilaha illallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Alam tara kayfa darab Allahu mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyibah. Do you not see the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts forth? of a good word that is like a beautiful tree, thabit, its roots are deep into the ground, and it rises high into the sky. The tree that was in the dream was La ilaha illallah. Ali on top of that tree climbing is him remaining firm upon La ilaha illallah. Him falling from the tree means he will die upon La ilaha illallah. Me and Sufwan being in that room means that we're going to be with him as he dies. Less than 24 hours of his death, me and Safwan, we were there and I came to his head and I said to him, Ali, he looked at me like this and I said to him, say la ilaha illallah and he'd say it with his heart and he wouldn't be able to move his tongue but he's saying it with his heart. I said to him, say subhanallah, say alhamdulillah, say la ilaha illallah, say Allahu Akbar, walhamdulillah, he said it. This is a dream that was fulfilled. This is the good news that the believer receives in this life and wallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him from among his awliya is salihin. Ameen, ameen, Allahumma ameen. Ali, yani, if you looked at his life towards the end of it, he achieved three things in his life, three things. Number one, he achieved this cancer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with. He himself considered it a gift of three years. Bi'ithnillah, that cancer of three years, its effect is that it would have bi'ithnillah ta'ala washed and cleansed his heart and soul from the sins that he had done in the past. That's the three years of cancer. It would have worked for that, inshallah. Number two, he achieved that he established a project in this life before his death. 
which was the MATW project, Muslim Around the World project, which we all know about it. He established it, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that that becomes a Sadaqa Jariya, an ongoing charity for him. I mean, basically, an ongoing charity means that it's a river of hasanat for him as he needs in his grave. He sits down, he does, doesn't do anything. As long as people are benefiting from his project, as long as people are being fed by his project and looked after, as long as it exists, to be idhnillah, it's got a long way for, yani, mm. for its existence. As long as it exists, he's earning rewards in his has, in his grave, as long as people are yani, benefiting from it. And you need to ask yourself, what is your project, my brothers in Islam? Ali, when he's resurrected on the day of judgment and he stands before Allah, very easy to say, oh Allah, this is my project. This is what I did for your sake. And this is what I present before on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, when you're resurrected, What's your project? What's this big thing you're working on that you're going to present before Allah and say, oh Allah, this is what I did for your deal. Ali had something, MATW project, with no hesitation, he'll come up and say, this is my project. That is sec that's his second achievement. And the third achievement, and this is Biyadillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he died during the blessed month of Ramadan. Allah. Three Allah. years of sickness. Allah. Who would have expected he's going to land right in Ramadan and way into Ramadan on the 11th day. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, so we can understand what it means to die in Ramadan. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the authentic hadith, Man khutima lahu bisiyam yawm dakhal al jannah. Anyone, anyone who fasts one day for the sake of Allah, which are the days of Ramadan, and that was his last action before he dies, guaranteed he enters the paradise. Allah. Ramadan is a month of fasting. Ali would have been fasting if his health was there. So it's counted for him as a fast. He enters the paradise because of this. We ask Allah for him that. My brothers in Islam, the worry really is not Ali. As you just seen in the explanation I gave you, really there's no worry upon Ali. The worry really, it's about me and you. The only certain thing in our life is death. And the tomorrow your money is not guaranteed. Tomorrow your family is not guaranteed that you wake up and see them. Tomorrow your house is not guaranteed. Allahu Alam what happens to it. Your work is not guaranteed. Your health is not guaranteed. Wallahi your health is not guaranteed. Do you know how Ali got cancer, the news of cancer? Three years ago, he was sitting down having a cup of tea and he drank it too quick and he burnt on top of his tongue. So he went to the mirror and he checked it and he seen something up his mouth. He went to the doctor and they checked him out and it was, it was cancer. And that's how he found out he had cancer. In an instant, in an instant, health is gone. And from then on, he's changed totally with a different mindset altogether. And to my brothers in Islam, understand that we're supposed to prepare for our hereafter. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man comes to him and he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, Mata Sa'a, when is the hour? When's it going to happen? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rejected this kind of question. And he said to him, Wa maza a'adatta laha? What have you prepared for it? In other words, with this question of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's teaching us, my brothers in Islam, that one needs to prepare for the hereafter. One needs to prepare for it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, as he mentions in the Quran, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in the hadith about this grave here, that the only certain thing in your life, as we said, is your death. This is the only certain thing that is going to happen in your future. What if you look at this grave? Look at it, look at the size of it. There are three things that are worrying about this grave. Number one, it's tightness. It was very tight. Ahmed was there, it was very tight. Number two, it's gloomy. Now it's really dark inside, even though we can see light here. And when he closes it up, it's going to be really dark. Number three, the third worry is that there's loneliness here. There's no one with you. You saw they put him in and they came out and we're all going to leave. But as for the believer, that's not his grave. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, regarding the tightness of the grave, he said, as for the believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands his grave so that it is the size as far as the eye can see. You see everything you can see around you? That's the size of the grave for the believer. Number two, there's darkness. How do we solve this problem? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As for the believer, it is enlightened for him in his grave. Light comes into his grave. What is the light? If the sun is outside and it doesn't penetrate into the soil, what's this light that he earns inside? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As-salatu noor. As-salatu noor. Allah azza wa jal, when he described the Quran, he said, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا فَالْقُرْآنُ وَالصَّلَاةِ is your light in this grave. Wallah al-Azim, my brothers in Islam, losing Ali, losing Ali, losing him, losing this family member of ours, 
it is much easier upon us than losing one salat in your life. You know why? That losing Ali, if you remain patient about it, it's a reason for why you earn rewards and why one elevates his ranks in the paradise. But if you lose one salat, it's the reason for why the punishment in the grave will begin. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that he saw in his, in his dream the punishment of the grave and he saw a person in his grave and an angel grabs a huge boulder and he throws it on his head. His head begins to smash and it breaks up and then it comes back together. And then the angel grabs this rock and he throws it back on his head and it remains like this until the day of judgment. When the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, what kind of person is that? He said, that is the person that he used to know the Quran and the importance of it, but he used to neglect it even in the month of Ramadan, the month of Quran. He used to neglect the Quran. Ask him, what's in your heart of the Quran? Wallah, he doesn't know. He's got nothing of the Quran. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, same hadith, وَكَانَ and when it comes time for the obligatory prayers, he used to sleep three, straight through it. Yeah, in other words, he had no concern. He had no concern for his salat. But you see, my brothers in Islam, this is just the punishment of the grave. This is just the punishment of the grave. Yeah, al qiyamah hasn't even begun yet. salat nur, the light of the grave is your salat. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that a person, he stands before Allah twice. Once in this life, which is your salat, and once in the hereafter, which is for your hisab, for your judgment. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, the one who perfects the standing before Allah in this life, yani the one who took care of his salat and his concern in salat and prayed it on its time, Allah will make his standing on the hereafter before Allah for the hisab easy. And the one who loses his standing before Allah in this life and does not show concern in his salat and he neglects it, Allah Azza wa Jalla will make it difficult upon him the standing before Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. This is the darkness of the grave. It's lit up with your salat. Where did you pray your salat in Fajr today? In Ramadan, if you did not pray it with congregation, then when are you going to wake up and pray it with the congregation? Allah says that it is very close for the people. Their accountability is going to be taken very soon. And they're still heedless. They're still dead. Their heart is still dead. It doesn't respond. It doesn't wake up. You come to this grave and you'll walk out. Wallahu alam if you're going to be better than what you are or not. My brothers in Islam, the last thing in this grave that's a problem is the loneliness. As for the believer, that's not a problem. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send to him a beautiful man with a beautiful smell that has beautiful clothing. And the dead would say to him, Man ant, who are you? Your face comes with good news and you smell good. For he says to him, Ana amaluka salih. I am your good deeds and I'll remain company with you until you come out from this grave. Ali rahimahullah closed his eyes. The next time he opens his eyes, it's going to be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the end of everyone. Wallah, wallahi, this is the end of everyone. See this? This is the end of the rich. And this is the end of the poor. And this is the end of the most beautiful woman. And this is the end of the most ugliest. And this is the end of the poor and the rich. Everyone, this is the end. Heather, this is the end. Fante, you're supposed to wake up and you're supposed to realize that you don't have much time in this life. Very soon we're gone. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Alhaakum at takathur. This has distracted you. At takathur is this, the money. Alhaakum hatta zurtum al maqabir. Until you visit the grave, until you die and you're buried. And Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, Until when? Until when is this going to distract you? Until the day you die? By Allah, I can guarantee and swear to it that more than 90% of us here have enough money to live for the next few years. But he's still you find you busy. Busy doing what? Rafi salat in the masjid, no Quran, nothing of the good. Yani whatever he can, he can, and he gives it like a joke like this. For my brothers in Islam, what you have, if it's enough for you, understand this is a blessing from Allah. Use the remainder time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end, my brothers in Islam, I say to you, this is the graveyard. You look at this grave and you look at the grave next to us and right and behind us and forward. They're not just pieces of land. They're not just pieces of land. Every grave underneath it is either a garden of the gardens of the paradise or either a pit of the hellfire as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. With Salaf rahimahumullah, when they used to come to the cemetery, they used to make life-changing decisions right here. Yani if someone was lacking on his sunan, he used to make a decision, I am going to be consistent on my sunan from now on. To make a decision in your life as you're standing here. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to يعني, grant and bless uh, Ali, uh, Brother Ali. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive him for his sins and shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy upon him, to accept from him his deeds, and to keep his sadaqa jariya going so that it becomes long lasting hasanat for him in this grave. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he resurrects him among us salihin, among the righteous, and that he admits him into the paradise in the highest levels on the paradise. And we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant the family and the father and the mother patience so that they can deal with this time of tribulation. You know, Ali subhanAllah, and I just remembered this is his parents. Just before he died two weeks ago, he was working on a pergola in the back of his house for his mother. He was a, a dutiful, a dutiful boy and a good boy to his parents. That's another door of the paradise that he saw in his life. Inshallah ta'ala, he enters the paradise through one of the eight doors of the paradise. Make dua for him. Sunnah now is to take some uh, dirt and put it on the, يعني, take three handfuls of dirt, put it on the grave from the head side, from the side of the head. And then after this, they'll close it up. And يعني, after that, make dua for him. Please take the dirt, take this dirt from the truck here that's on the